Is your betta fish getting sick and you're not sure what to do? Keep watching as I discuss the five most common diseases your betta fish might have and how to treat them. Hi, my name is Irene from Aquarium Cop, and the first disease on our list is fin rot. In fact, I've already covered it before. We have a whole video over here that you can look at for more details, but basically it's when the fins start disintegrating, usually on the edges of it. Sometimes they'll have rips and tears in the middle and they just will not heal. If left untreated, it could potentially eat away all the fins and the tail to the point where it's lethal to your fish. So you definitely wanna make sure you do something about it. Now, the first step, which is going to be kind of a common theme for all of the treatments that I mentioned today, is going to be locate the source of stress. Now, the reason why you don't want to jump straight into treatment is because I actually had a betta fish. I was treating him with medication and he just would not heal because I hadn't removed the source of stress. So what I mean by that is, is it something like the water is too cold or the current is too fast? Um, is the water too dirty because you haven't cleaned it in a while? Or is there sharp decor in there? Or maybe your betta fish is flaring at his own reflection or at the other tank mates in the aquarium. Whatever it is, get rid of it so he can start the process of healing. The second step, which is again going to be common for all the treatments that I mentioned, is going to be clean your aquarium. I don't care that you did it just recently or you've done all your water test kits that you can find in your house. Sometimes they're just things that we cannot measure. And so you just want to go ahead and do a nice water change, get that gravel vacuum and siphon up any gunk on the bottom so that you can create a stress-free environment for your betta. Now, because fin rot is often caused by a bacterial infection, we wanna treat it with antibiotics. So this is uh, Fritz Mardell Marison, which contains an antibiotic called erythromycin. And you just wanna follow the instructions on the back of the box where it says, dump one packet of powder per 10 gallons of water and then repeat for every 24 hours for five days in a row. And then afterwards, if the treatment doesn't work, you can repeat that five day treatment again and just watch to see if your fish is improving or not. If you don't have access to antibiotics at your location, then try aquarium salt. It is very good at treating all sorts of types of infections, including bacterial infections. And I have a link to a blog post over here that gives step-by-step -step instructions on how to do it. The reason why I didn't mention it before is because salt generally is not safe for aquarium plants or snails. And so you may want to move your betta fish to a hospital tank to treat him separately there. While your betta is going through treatment and then afterwards as well, while he's recovering, you wanna feed him a wide variety of fresh, healthy foods, and then make sure to, again, reduce all sources of stress that you can find because that's gonna really, really help his recovery process. This treatment regimen is actually pretty useful for a lot of different other kinds of bacterial infections that betta fish get, such as you know Popeye or red streaks on the body. So if you feel like your betta has a bacterial infection, give this method a try. The second common disease I wanna talk about is white spot disease or ick. Basically you have this parasite that attaches to the side of your fish's body, forms a white protective cyst, and then starts sucking the life out of your fish, kind of like a miniature vampire. Often you'll see it start in the fins and the tail first, and then if left untreated, more and more spots will multiply every single day until your fish may potentially pass away. The causes are, again, stress, or you introduced a new fish to your aquarium and you didn't quarantine it. So not to worry, I've got a whole video over here on how to make your own DIY quarantine tank. Very easy, very simple. But as with before, the first step is to find and locate all sources of stress and remove them. Step two, clean the aquarium. Like I said before, go ahead and maintenance that filter, vacuum up all the gunk down below. And then step three is medication. So the most effective medication we found on the market in the United States is ICX. Like many of the medications um, in this list, it is safe for fish, baby fish, shrimp, snails, plants, beneficial bacteria, soda and so forth. I can't say the same about other ick medications. So we've tested this one very thoroughly. Follow the instructions on the back. It's one teaspoon or five milliliters of ick X per 10 gallons of water. Dose that every 24 hours until you see no symptoms and then go ahead and dose one to two extra days just in case. If you don't have access to ick X, 
use aquarium salt like before. So follow the instructions from that blog post I linked before, but it's gonna be, again, not safe for snails, for plants, and it'll be slower acting as well. Essentially, you're waiting to dehydrate the parasites to death <laughs> is how you're gonna kill them. Now, ICX is good at treating a number of external parasites, but if you feel like it's a external parasite like flukes, or an internal parasite like tapeworms, definitely try out Fritz Paracleanse. This is an anti-parasitic medication, which we made a whole video on over here. Disease number three is not really disease as much as like a symptom. Swollen bellies in betta fish is very common and often is accompanied by other symptoms like swim bladder disease, which again is a symptom, not a disease, where because your betta fish is bloated for some reason, it is pushing the swim bladder out of whack and now your fish is not able to swim as well and it's no longer as buoyant. There are several causes for having a swollen belly, so let's go through them. One of them is obesity. You are feeding your fish too much. So the obvious answer is to feed your fish less or even put it on a temporary fast, anywhere from three to seven days. And if it is an obesity issue, you should definitely see a difference in the size of their abdomen. Remember, the betta fish abdomen should be kind of slightly rounded, but not protruding or swollen. If your fish is experiencing constipation where you haven't seen it poop in a while, so now its body is just filled with waste that can't pass, well, one, make sure your heater is on. Sometimes when the water is too cold, their digestive system can slow down and they don't go to the restroom as easily. And then number two, we want to add more roughage into their diet. So things like frozen daphnia, cyclops, brine shrimp, those little crustaceans have exoskeletons that are passed through your betta's fish body pretty easily, as well as vegetable content. So foods that are high in fiber, algae, that kind of thing. Swollen bellies could also be caused by bloat, where it's not necessarily the stomach that's enlarged, but actually the organs itself that's enlarged. And unfortunately, there's a lot of mysterious reasons why that might be occurring. If it is caused by a bacterial infection, then you can try treating it with the uh, method that we mentioned before in the fin rot section. But if it's caused by a viral infection or cysts or tumors, there's really not a lot you can do except try to, again, eliminate all sources of stress, make your betta fish as comfortable as possible, and see what happens. Lastly, we have an egg-bound female betta fish where, you know, if you're feeding her lots of good food, she's got a good clean environment, she's gonna wanna breed and she'll fill her body full of eggs. When she isn't able to breed, the body will naturally absorb those eggs and there usually is not a problem with that. Nothing you need to do. The fourth reason why your betta may not be doing well is poisoning. Maybe there is some kind of chemical in the water that is harming your fish, whether it's chlorine, ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, uh, pH burns, right? All of that would cause your fish's gills and body to start basically getting these chemical burns. And so the symptoms you may see include inflamed gills, gasping or rapid breathing. Maybe they're just lying down on the ground, not really moving because they're in so much pain. So the way to find out what is going on is to bring out every single test kit that you have, whether it is something like test strips or uh, the API master test kit uses test tubes to measure the water quality. Once you find out what the cause is, again, you're going to number one, remove that source of stress by most likely number two, doing a large water change to remove the presence of that chemical. And then after that, it's gonna to have to be a wait and see approach to see how bad the damage is. So while they're recovering, keep that water quality high as usual, feed them lots of good foods, keep the stress level low, and hopefully they'll get better soon. Because their body is damaged and is now healing, a lot of times the immune system is compromised and a secondary infection may set in. So if it is a bacterial or parasitic infection, take a look at the previous sections I just mentioned, or if it's a fungal infection, that's what I'm gonna talk about next. Disease number five on the list is cottony growths on your betta fish. And that might be around the mouth area or more on the body and fins. And those have two different treatments, but I actually go into more detail over here on our fish fungus video. But the short and sweet of it is again, number one, remove all sources of stress. Number two, clean the whole aquarium. If it is cottony growths around the mouth, 
Most likely it's actually a bacterial infection, not fungus. And so in that case, we're gonna go back to our nifty Marison antibiotic and treat it according to the instructions on the back of the box. However, if it is a fungus that is attacking the body or the fins, in this case, we're gonna actually use two medications, Ix and Marison, because a lot of times the fungus will attack the body and make holes or wounds, and then bacterial comes in as a secondary infection. So in a minor case of it, you're gonna treat with one packet and one teaspoon of Ix for every 10 gallons of water. Let it soak in the water for seven days without doing any water changes and see if the symptoms get better. However, if it's a serious case of it and it's not responding to treatment, go ahead and do one packet of Marison and one teaspoon of Ix every 24 hours for five days in a row. As usual, if you don't have access to those medications, you can always go to good old aquarium salts, see that blog post from before, because both mouth and body fungus are highly susceptible to salt. If I just helped your better fish out, make sure to subscribe to more Aquarium Caught because I'll be popping up more on this channel from now on. Enjoy nature daily and I'll see you later.